This UCSD TV program is a presentation of University of California Television for educational and non commercial use only. UC San Diego got some welcome news earlier this anniversary year. In its latest survey, the National Research Council put UCSD's Biological Sciences program in first place, beating out the doctoral programs of more than 200 research institutions across the country. Steve Kay, Dean of Biological Sciences, shares one reason why UC San Diego earned this distinction, with a glimpse into translational biology. Fundamental studies in biology, what are often referred to as discovery biology, are absolutely essential to every branch of medicine. We're quite used to a term that's used, translational medicine, how discoveries made at the bench are moved to the bedside. I actually believe in a similar concept that can be viewed as translational biology. That is, where do the original ideas come from for what's gone wrong in a certain disease and how we can treat it? What's really critical now is to have the right biological hypothesis, the right intervention point. If we can understand the exact molecular intervention point inside of an organism, we can cure the disease. We can correct that disease at a molecular level. That's how we're going to develop the most advanced types of medicines is by starting off with the right biological question to answer. We've chosen to gather some of our faculty and their research resources into research centers. One such research center is the Center for Neural Circuits and Behavior the CNCB. The next level of understanding in neurobiology is really going to come from understanding the incredible complexity of the brain. And it's by understanding that circuitry that we're really going to provide new opportunities for treatment of neuropsychiatric disorders and new treatments for neurodegenerative disorders. One beautiful example comes recently from the laboratory of Professor Nick Spitzer. It has been long thought that once our brain has developed, the individual neurons within our brain have a defined identity that doesn't change for the life of the organism. But Professor Spitzer's research has completely turned that idea on its head. They found by exposing a model organism, in this case tadpoles, to different light conditions, that the chemistry of certain types of neurons and neuronal circuits can actually switch from one type of chemical signal to a different type. And it's staggering because it tells us that the brain is even more adaptable than we thought. It could well be that the types of discoveries that Professor Spitzer is making is going to be very relevant to something like an affective disorder or neurodegenerative disorders like Parkinson's. A few years ago, we established a very different kind of center here at UC San Diego called the Center for Chronobiology. All organisms have a very fundamental type of biological clock ticking inside of them, what we call a circadian clock. In my own lab, for example, we've begun to examine how these biological clocks work in the liver. And we made a very surprising discovery. One of the molecular cogs of our own biological clock is a protein called cryptochrome. Now interestingly, cryptochrome was first discovered in plants. And what my lab was able to recently show is that this protein actually controls something that we call hepatic gluconeogenesis. That is how much sugar the liver makes when an organism is being fasted. What we've discovered in experimental animals is that when biological clocks go wrong, the animal tends to develop diabetes. In other words, there is a very tight connection between the biological clock that works in our liver and our fundamental metabolism. And we think that this is going to provide new opportunities to treat diabetes. For example, we found in laboratory mice that if we manipulate the amount of this clock gene cryptochrome. If we just turn up the cryptochrome gene a little in the livers of these mice, we can give a great benefit to the animal in terms of handling glucose levels. 
So what this tells us is that there is going to be a whole new path for how we can discover diabetes drugs. We now know, perhaps, that if we can identify drugs that can manipulate cryptochrome levels in the liver, this will provide us a new opportunity to develop treatments for diabetes that, rather than, for example, injecting insulin on a daily basis, will go to the fundamental defect in that disease and correct it. That's what I mean by having the correct biological hypothesis. Another cluster of research that we have ongoing is that of the field of immunology, which really is understanding at its most fundamental level how our body mounts a defense against disease. Well, work that is ongoing in the laboratory of Professor Stephen Hedrick is designed to answer that question. T lymphocytes are incredibly important in fighting disease. They are, if you like, really our most effective killers of foreign material inside of the body. T cell levels can be increased 10,000 times over the resting state in response to an infection. But we don't want those T cells to be around forever. We want them to do their job, clear the infection, and go away again. And so Hedrick's work has really discovered some of the molecular triggers inside of these T cells that are responsible for setting the right numbers of these cells, how quickly the cells divide and develop, but also how quickly the cells go away again. They've been able to identify the exact molecular switches, the brake pedal for lymphocyte development. And so when they inactivate the brake pedal, what they find is a massive overproliferation of T cells. And in the laboratory animal, that proliferation of T cells leads to the types of diseases that we see from an overactive immune system, that is, inflammatory and autoimmune disorders. Once again, we foresee plenty of new opportunities for developing medicines for these types of diseases. If we can really identify treatments that hone in on the molecular components that our biologists are discovering, then that's going to be the path by which we're actually going to come up with disease-modifying treatments, treatments that get to the heart of the disorder and are truly providing an opportunity for a cure. It's also going to be important for new types of therapies for cancer. Increasingly, we're recognizing that one of the greatest allies we can have in trying to treat a tumor inside of a patient is the patient's immune system. And if we can discover drugs that can manipulate the patient's immune system so that their own immune system can be turned against their cancer, that's going to be a very powerful new type of way of treating cancer. So Hedrick's work is going to allow us to come up with new strategies for an incredibly wide range of diseases, going from infections all the way through to inflammatory disorders and cancers. I'm incredibly proud to be the leader of a division that has the type of faculty and students that we've talked about. And I think if you were to stop in any of the labs and ask these researchers where they see the future, I think what they would tell you is they see a very bright future in terms of how fundamental biological knowledge is more quickly being translated to the bedside.